Hello and welcome. My name is Svetlana Stone and you are watching Artist Voices, where we believe it's essential for artist voices to be heard. And we are pleased uh, to have uh, Lisa Sung here at Public Media Network uh, to learn about what does it mean to be a musician in the 21st century. Thank you for watching us. And Lisa, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Uh, we are so uh, happy to have you here to learn more about you. Um, could you please tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from, and what you're doing? Sure. Um, well, um, I'm Korean American. I was born in Korea, but I immigrated to America when I was a teenager. I grew up in Philadelphia. And I went to school in Philly, um, and I, went, I also went to school in New York, in New York University. And when my, um, and after I got married, um, after about 10 years later, my husband wanted to come back to um, uh, Calvin to study more. So that's how I came to Grand Rapids, to Midwest here. I am um, I am a mom, a uh, mother of six children. <laughs> I also teach at uh, Hope College, um, jazz piano, and I also teach at, at Calvin University, um, um, jazz piano and gospel choir. <laughs> yes. That's amazing, Lisa. How you. you become uh, a pianist? Uh, like you said, uh, you uh, came here from South Korea, and where you play instrument there, or how, how you start um, your um, passion or love to piano? Yes, so I started learning piano when I was seven years old, and um, I continued all through my high school years. <laughs> Uh, also, but I went to college for um, nursing, which I didn't do so well. <laughs> so, so, and then, how you end up with piano? I've I've always had the passion to play the piano. To play the piano. So, and um, when I was at, uh, I went to Temple University. That was my. Um, that's where I got my bachelor's degree. And um, Terrell Stafford. Uh, came in as a as a director of the jazz studies, and um, I so studied. the first was classical piano, right? Class the first classical? was classical piano, and then uh, then I just I just really love jazz. Back then there was not many jazz musicians, <laughs> um, and then. Um, I, I just really love that sound. <laughs> Where my parents had a store in the city of Philadelphia, and then there was a church right across <laughs> from our, where our store was, and I heard this uh, just amazing music, and I knew that I really had to study, and I really had to learn this music. And that's how it, it all started. <laughs> <Yeah>. That's amazing. <laughs> and um, you mentioned that you are a mother of six mm -hmm. and how you do manage your career working at two different schools and also being a musician um uh first of all <laughs> i think it's it's a passion i i didn't um i was not involved in music for about good 10 years that's when i had my children and um, I, even a, a nice piano was in our living room. I just couldn't, I just couldn't get there to play because I was so busy taking care of my my children. And when I when my husband came to Grand Rapids, um, is he also a musician? No, 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 he's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, when he came to study here. Um, I, he, he and I were, uh, he was looking for like a part-time job, right, to support the family, and he just couldn't find one. And I was able to find something, and then that was, that was being a church, like a church music director. And that just kind of started to, I started to play a little bit more and more, and, and, um, and one thing led to others, and I, I started teaching at Calvin, right? And um, yeah, I think it's the passion that I just 
I just really wanted to get back to playing. <laughs> when when the, there was an opportunity, I was like, okay, here I am. I have to now help my husband <laughs> while he's studying financially, and then now I can maybe get back to playing again after 10 years of not doing anything music. So I think it's the passion. And I'm able to do it now a lot more because now my kids are older. <laughs> Um, and my husband is just helping me, supporting me like 100%. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> Does it help to know like that um, your family support you? How is it important for you being a musician to know that your family support your passion about music? About music, since you said it was very important for you, you know, like you really love music and want to continue, but then you had this. Uh, break for 10 years, but still you you still have this passion and you come back. So how is it important for the musician, you think, and for you to know that your family support you? Oh, it's, it's, it's huge. Um, if I didn't have that support, I wouldn't be able to go out in the evening to do all these different gigs. <laughs> First of all, they, uh, my, my family, they love music, and they love jazz. <laughs> all, all your children? Yes. <laughs> do they play instruments, too? Well, uh, <laughs> two of them do. Um, and they just, uh, they, 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 because they always listen to jazz, right? Since I was, I think, you know, even though I was not playing at all, I was always listening to music, right? And then... Um, they knew that I was a jazz um, pianist, and then they said, Mom, I like when you play that song, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Sometimes, like, I would play, like, Korean songs. I, I would jazz it up, <laughs> and then, like, I wow, would play Wow, that's amazing. Them, you know? So uh, they, they grew up listening to jazz music, and they are proud that, um, that I'm, I'm back to playing again. And so it is so important that they're helping me, supporting me, um, you know, this way. <laughs> so, yes, it's it's big <laughs> that they are supportive and that, yeah, <laughs> in my establishing my career, it's it's very important. <laughs> yeah. And you are uh, working with a lot of students, and uh, you also a uh, director of gospel choir. Mm -hmm. um, how um, you inspire your students um, to be like a better musician or full of their passion? Um, so um, I love working with um, students, especially um, at, at you know these two different colleges, it, where there's so many diversity. I see students from all over the world, and they they bring me different energy too. They bring me their own culture. Um, you know, they they're used to hearing what their like you know music that they grew up right. So they shared share that with me, and I get and I learn from them. So it's not just like me teaching them, but we're we're sharing this music together, and that. Um, at the same time, I'm teaching, but I'm also learning too. So um, it, I love teaching, and I love like learning from them. I love it, giving them inspiration. So um, I, I don't know if I answered your question right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, how you inspire them to continue to be a musician because yeah. it's not an easy field. Like uh, yeah. people see the musicians are playing music and it look very beautiful, but uh, some people are not aware uh, what it's cost. Mm -hmm. Like uh, once I heard that each success has half price. Do you agree with that expression? That Yes, so... Um, <clears throat> I, <laughs> yeah, over the years, like, I've been teaching for, for quite a long time now. Um, I see students with all different kinds of background and um, work ethic, and, um, yeah, and sometimes they, they have different expectations when they come to me. 
uh, but I I do push them. <laughs> I say, you know, if you want to play this music, you're gonna have to work at it. <laughs> and um, I think in that way, I, um, I guess I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> good at like pushing, <laughs> um, and in, and like give give them different inspiration. <laughs> um, I think. In, you know, uh, b before I am like the teacher, music teacher, I think um, I'm more like a, I'm more like a mom, you know, <laughs> to students and to my, my kids. So my my nickname at Calvin um, is uh, Mama Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Yes. So um, so at at some point, I I do push them in in. I said, you have to practice. You have to do your work. And I just don't do that, you know, with, with my words. But, you know, I, I show them. I give them some strategies or some, like, you know, work, all these different work that they can do. So, yeah. So all these different ways that I, I try to inspire them and, and direct them. <laughs> yes. So you think, um, you mentioned work ethic. You think some students, um, like, have... Um, maybe misunderstanding about work eating and what the, um, does it take to be a musician that it's involved a lot of work, especially, you know, like if it's music, do you think they sometimes they don't understand how much it's involved? Yeah, I think so, because, um, uh, yeah, I mean, because like some some students will come in and they say, "I want to play like Jacob Collier." Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to be playing <laughs> like Cole Henry. I mean, you know, this <laughs> so <laughs> um, just to get them to um, do that is 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 not an easy task. But they just have to understand how much work is involved to be able to like play you know so um sometimes sometimes yes right but um other times especially when they uh have been playing for a long time and when they experience going into like competitions and right like some students come in already playing gigs around the town so then they know what the expectation is like what they have to do to achieve that goal. So, yeah, so every student is different. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Welcome back for those of you who just tuned in. We are here at Public Media Network with Lisa Sung to learn about what does it mean to be a musician in the 21st century. And Lisa, thank you again for being with us. Um, I want to um, ask you about um, being a musician, um, what, what do you try to tell um, to this world through your music, through your message, and I don't know if you write your own music, um, and what music um, what does music mean to you? Mm. So, I, how the, that's such and a, maybe like yeah. how how is it important? Because sometimes we uh, like there is a like misconception about music. Uh, people may think it's not important, you know, to have music. You know, there's more important things. Um, in this world than the music. Um, and being a musician, uh, like, what, what music means to you and why do you think it's important to have music and to continue like educate people and be a musician? Yeah. Um, so... And you also do uh, gospel choir. Yes, yes, uh, yes, I do. I, uh, I, I, um, I work with a fabulous conductor. He's a, he's, he's a conductor for the Calvin University Gospel Choir. His name is Nate Gillespie Jr. 
I've been working with him for about nine years now. Um, I, he, do, he, does, he directs the choir and I do the music part. So, um, uh, so you asked me about, how, uh, about the music. Yeah, why um, do you think it's important? Yeah, uh, well, I guess, um, can I kind of go back to your, your, your first question yeah. about, you know, what kind of music that I do? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, if you, I was asking you if you yes. write your own music. Yes, so, and yes. And what message you want to... Yeah, I do, I do write my own, own music. Music? Yes, and it is really influenced by... Um, Korean, <laughs> Korean sound. I don't, I don't, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, but I grew up listening to the Korean pop from like 80s and 90s. <laughs> um, so that kind of melody has always been, has been very embedded in my, <laughs> it, that's kind of like going back to my roots, right? Um, um, uh, the kind of music that I, I I love to do is um, when I was when I was uh, on a maternity leave for for a good ten years. I uh, that's when a time when I sang to my children Korean children's music, um, Korean children's song, and because my mom also sang that those songs to me, so I did that to my children. And I, and one night I was thinking, what can I do with these, you know, be beautiful melodies? I, you know, I, I think to them all the time, can I do something? And then can I do something for my children? So, so they would say, oh, mommy did this for me, <laughs> you know? So um, it has been in my, my dream to um, arrange those melodies and then, um, Put out a, an album, which which I did, and then um, those are the uh, so, um, uh, things that I and and over the years I noticed that I, I love to do that. I love to take um, old melodies, folk melodies, and just arrange them into my own style. So and um, the second album that is coming out is is that. So the first album is all Korean children's music. And then the second album is um, um, Korean pop uh, music from like 80s and 90s. <laughs> and then I arranged, I arranged them. Um, and, and then I also uh, wrote a couple songs. And so the, those are the music that I um, love to do. And then by doing that, I noticed um, not just Korean. If there is a children's songs in every country, there's children's song in um, you know that those children's song that I love that I can always arrange, <laughs> and then um, uh, and then uh, and then play with different musicians. And then that's what I love to do, and that's what I want to continue to do and tell the world, <laughs> tell the people around me that I just, I love these old melodies. These simple melodies can become something really wonderful. <laughs> but what are they um, about those songs that the, attract you? So uh, those songs about um, just the simple melodies and um, very melodic and just very singable <laughs> and something that we we all can relate to right so in my in my concerts i always talk about it i ask the audience can you can you journey with me to your childhood is it bring you back yeah. because you came here to this when you were 7 years yes. old is bring you back to your child yes uh, who when you were yeah to make you feel good yeah so the audience they they can relate to me not just they're listening to exactly. some melodies but they can think about their childhood when they were listening to their mom singing to them uh, lullabies <laughs> so that's what i love to do and and i would love to continue to do that Yes.
That's amazing. Uh, Lisa, how uh, uh, people can find your music and information about you so it and will, your future performances? Yes. Um, I, have a, I have a website called um, lisasong.com. Um, my, um, and then there's uh, Lisa Song Bandcamp. <laughs> also, uh, it will be on uh, at, like um, some some on YouTube and uh, like Apple and Spotify. We'll, we'll be there. <laughs> Is it under Lisa Song, right? Yes. Oh, actually, either Lisa Song or Mama Lisa. Mama Lisa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, is there anything else you would like to tell to our uh, listeners? Something that we may have missed and you want to yeah, share? Yeah, so uh, recently um, I received uh, an award. Wow, tell yes. us about this award. Yes, uh -huh. so it's a uh, John um, State's Jazz Award. Um, and, and actually it was based in, in Kalamazoo. Uh, it's, um, it's, a, it's about um, honoring his passion for jazz and jazz musicians. Uh, and I think that award, um, they, uh, I, I received this award uh, in December of last year. <laughs> uh, um, and, um, and the grant is allowing me to um, uh, travel to Indonesia in February. Wow. <laughs> so I will be traveling there with a bassist um, Tom Knefik. That's awesome. And um, trumpet um, player and drummer Max Kali. We will be doing master classes and concerts there. <laughs> and what we did was we arranged the Indonesian children's and their music and we're going to be performing there with the local um, jazz musicians there. So, um, and I'm, I'm really excited about our, this is our first tour, and our second tour will be in Korea in September for about two and a half weeks, and I'm going to be doing the same thing over there. I'll bring a um, um, couple U.S. Um, uh, jazz musicians, and I'll collaborate with Korean jazz musicians, and I'll, I'll, I'll also go to uh, Vietnam and and Philippines. So that it, it's a it's a huge project, but it's it's happening. So I really wanted to, um, you know, share this what I'm doing with you. This is amazing. I, I just uh, very happy that you were able to share so more people would know about the project and what you're doing. Yes. And you're also gonna like it's, it's mostly like. Um, like also you're gonna perform for the children. What's your audience will be, or it could be? Oh, it's schools uh, in in Indonesia. Yes. Oh yeah. It's, so we we'll be like going into uh, like high schools, college. Um, we're going to jazz. One of the big biggest like jazz school in Jakarta, and then we have a um, we are collaborating with their faculty. <laughs> So um, that's in Jakarta, and in Bali we'll do we'll do similar to that, and we have a few like um, jazz club um, dates there as well. Yes. Thank you, thank you, uh, Lisa, for being with us. Uh, we appreciate um, that uh, you were able to come and share about your passion, uh, about your music, mm -hmm. with our listeners and viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, we conclude uh, this episode of Artist Voices, uh, where we believe it's essential for artist voices to be heard, and we are uh, thank Lisa Sun for being with us tonight, and thank you for watching us, and see you next time. <laughs>